How's it going, everybody? Sam here with Bosch Rexroth. Today, I'm going to be demonstrating a new app on the Control X store called the Container Engine application. I think it's a pretty safe bet that most people finding this video have a little bit of background knowledge on what containers are. But just to be sure uh, we cover our bases here, I'm going to give a brief overview on containerization and how we're going to use that in the Control X core. So to start off, what is a container anyways? There are two main classes of containers. There are application containers and system containers. Today, when I talk about containers, I'm talking about an application container. And this is a container that doesn't necessarily have an operating system package with it. It just has your application code to run your process. Um, containers are a method of isolating processes running on a given system. Because they package all of their dependencies together, they'll run the same regardless of the platform that you deploy them on. Each container is built using an image, which is essentially just a template that contains all the code and data that you need to build an instance of your container. Containers also share their host operating system uh, through an interface application. In the case of the container engine app on the core, this is the Docker engine. Docker is a very popular platform for building and managing containers. Each container is also isolated from other containers running on the same system and is assigned a unique IP address. So I think this image below does a pretty good job of illustrating the differences in architecture between a virtual machine and a Docker container. So on the left hand side, you have a virtual machine architecture. So there are three VMs running on a hypervisor um, on this system. So you have, as you can see, in each virtual machine, you have an entire guest operating system packaged along with that VM image. On the right hand side, you have a container, two containers actually, running on a single Docker engine. And as you can see here, there's no guest OS package here. It's just your application code, your binaries and libraries that are needed to execute, execute your process. Okay. So some key benefits here, uh, we have distribution and portability. Because all of your container images, they package all of the dependencies needed to run your, your application, it's very easy to distribute them and deploy them um, across a variety of systems. They're also much lighter weight than a VM because they don't necessarily contain um, an entire operating system. They, they do a great job of supporting a microservice architecture because they make it very easy to break larger applications into smaller decoupled processes. Um, another key point is scalability and elasticity. So because each container is an isolated process, um, new instances of a container can be created and destroyed um, to handle varying loads on your application. So if, if you're getting a lot of traffic, you can increase the number of container instances to handle that. And finally, we have performance. Because your entire operating system is not virtualized, there are performance benefits over a VM. You're just running your application processes. So now that we have the basics covered of container technology, how do we do this on the Control X core? Well, let's open up VS Code and take a look at an example. I decided before we get too deep into the code, I'll take a little step back here and explain how the Container Engine application works at a bit of a higher level. So here I have open our Control X web interface. Um, I'm in the Settings and Apps tab. And you can see I have the Container Engine app installed here. And this is available on the Control X store. Uh, you will need a license to, to run it on the core. Um, and now the way that we're actually going to create containers and run them in our Container Engine is by providing them using a separate snap. So here I have Control X Docker Mosquito interface. And this is a snap I've created, which has three container images um, located in a specific location that the container engine is um, going to look at. So 
what's happening inside the container engine is, is actually hosting a Docker engine. And when it sees the images that have been provided in the snap I've installed, um, it will allow us to create um, instances of those containers and run them on our system. So if I come over to the left-hand side here, you can see there's a tab for a container engine. If I drop that down, there's two submenus, images and containers. So if I click images here, you can see these are the three images that are recognized as being provided to the Docker engine through the snap I've installed. Um, so there's three pieces here. Uh, it, it's not important and I'll provide the source code so people can use this as an example, but um, in, in the demo, what I have is a MQTT broker, um, a, a little web UI, and then an interface between the control X data layer and the MQTT broker. And kind of the, the purpose of the demo is to, um, to be able to, uh, to provide a path to the MQTT interface, which will read all the tags um, that are below it in the data layer tree and subscribe to those tags and then provide them to an MQTT broker. So it's automatically pushing all data that is received on the data layer to your MQTT broker. Um, so now if we go to the containers tab here, you can see here are the three um, container instances that have been created using our images here. Um, as you can see, two of them are running. So the, the UI, the web interface is running and the Mosquito Broker is also running. Um, I've stopped this process here on the top, the actual data layer interface, because I'm going to show you how I can run the same process using the same image um, on my PC as well as on the core. So now that we kind of understand how the container engine works, uh, let's look at a code example. All right, now I have my project open in VS Code. So I'm just gonna start stepping through some of the core components here. So the process at a, at a higher level is as follows. I'm going to build each image um, for the containers I want to uh, provide via my snap using a Docker file. So in this case, I have two Docker files. Um, next, I'm going to create a snap um, that is going to contain those built images. And I do that using um, a snapcraft.yaml definition file. And um, the snapcraft.yaml specifies these content interfaces, um, Docker Compose here and Docker Volume. So Docker Compose is a uh, read-only content interface where my Docker engine can then access my container images that are contained in this snap. And Docker volumes is where I can write to um, from the Docker engine as well. So uh, first we'll start off with our Docker file. And I'm not gonna cover this at a super low level because it's a, it's a very in-depth topic and it's actually very specific to the application that you are building. Um, but just as a, as a basis here, um, generally what you're going to do is you're going to be starting from some parent or base image. So in this case, it's a Python image. Um, and then I'm gonna create a working directory inside of that image. I'll copy my source code from my local machine to that image, install all packages and dependencies I need to run my application. And then I finally just specify a entry point. So this is the command that's run um, when I launch my container. So that's Docker files. Um, Docker Compose is another important piece here. And this is what's used to actually specify how to build your containers um, using your images. So you say, here I'm providing um, an image name. So I'm going to build from this image a container named Mosquito. And you can also specify ports to uh, open and forward on that container. So in order to access, for example, my Mosquito broker um, that's running on my Control X core, 
the port 1883 is forwarded to the container port 1883. So I can access my broker using uh, inside of my container process via my control X core IP address. Um, volumes are what are used to persist data across instances of your container. So um, because of the nature of containers, when you launch them and, uh, and stop them, they lose all data that was um, generated during their running process. So unless you have a location to persist that data across running instances of the container, um, you lose it every time. So uh, yeah, that's Docker Compose. And the last piece I'll cover when it comes to code are these build scripts here. Now, technically all of this could be done from the command line, but rather than going through that tedious process every time, there are some scripts available here um, that will just automate that build process. So build all just calls all of the uh, intermediary scripts. So we're going to build our mosquito image, build our MQTT interface image, and then build our UI image. After we've built all of those, we will snap the application. Um, so you might have asked yourself, oh, I notice you only have two um, Docker files here, but you have three images. So where is the third coming from? And the answer is the mosquito image is actually available online. So all I'm doing is pulling this image um, onto my machine rather than in the case of the UI, building it locally. So that's another option there. All right. So um, now I think we'll move on to the actual application demo so you can see how this works on the core. So if you remember from earlier in the video, I showed you here how this container is not running, the actual MQTT interface container. It's not running on the core. Um, I've stopped it intentionally. And the reason why is I want to show you how I can run this same um, interface from my PC. So um, one of the things this interface does is it provides a node to the data layer on the core. So this is the data layer as it looks without the interface running, um, just so you can see what it looks like um, before I actually launch the container on my PC. So if I go to back to VS Code and I, I list out the images I have here already built. So I have my interface image. And then if I run this interface, and this is running on a virtual machine on my PC, which is networked to my Control X core. So now I go back to um, Control X web UI and I refresh. You can now see this node has been provided to the uh, Control X core data layer. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm running the same container on my PC as on the Control X core. So then uh, I'll show you also how to connect to the MQTT broker. So this is my Control X core IP address. If I come back to my container engine and look at my running containers, you can see the IP address of my Mosquito container is actually 172.31.02, but because I have this port forwarded, um, I can access the broker directly through my Control X core. So this is what we're going to be working with here. Um, now, I'll go ahead and stop the uh, container on my PC, and I will launch it on the core. All right, now you can see the status, uh, the state rather has changed from exited to running on my data layer. Oh, interesting. I think they just switched positions, but um, yeah, the interface is also running now. So if we go to back to data layer, you'll see, yep, 
this node is still available. It, it was technically down for the one second or, or a few seconds in between the killing of the process on my local PC and launching it on my control X core. But um, here's our MQTT broker. Um, we have just the default system topics available here. Now, um, what I'll do is I will browse down into my PLC and grab, let's say, um, these HMI variables here. So it's just a number of tags. So if I copy this path and I paste it into my MQTT root, and I come back to my broker, you'll see these topics are being generated here. So that's all the data that was um, stored on the data layer. And you can see now I'll go back to the data layer and change these tags. They also have subscriptions in the background. So if I update one of these Boolean to true, for example, it's currently false on the broker. I write it, come back, we see true. Okay, so I think that will do it for today's demo. Hope it was useful.